What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can composite bullet spark hits inside of Adobe After Effects. This is a basic visual effects compositing tutorial. We'll be covering some basic tracking techniques along with the addition of some elements from our FX Sweep collection. And then finally, we'll be tweaking the look of those elements to integrate them into our final shot. In my opinion, as a filmmaker, basic visual effects stock footage compositing is one of the best things you can learn to increase your production value on a budget if you just know a couple basic things, muzzle flashes, bullet hits, compositing some fire, things like this, you can really increase your production value and it opens your mind to more storytelling possibilities. So anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of Adobe After Effects. We have our actor here, Chris. This is a clip from our FX Soup app commercial and I'll just go ahead and roll what we're going to be creating here. All right, so he jumps down, we have some spark hits, a little bullet hit there at the end, we might add that as well, just for fun. So let's go ahead and delete some of these elements here and we'll start from scratch. Actually, I'm going to keep the muzzle flares. Okay. And actually I will keep this layer here as well because this is our muzzle flash lighting. So uh, if you guys don't know how to do muzzle flares, uh, comment below and I'll make a tutorial on that as well. That's uh, an even more basic one that I can cover. All right, so this is going to be our starting point for our spark hit, let's uh, let's start it off here. So I have several different spark elements that we can composite here. These are included in our FX Soup app studio subscription, and we actually made a deal with Detonation Films for them to allow us to offer these as a license to you. So if you're interested in these elements, you can sign up for FX Soup studio subscription, and we will send you 250 of these visual effects elements. And just to give you an idea, our folder here, you can see all the different types of elements we have, and we're going to be using some spark hits from this folder here. You can see already we have just in this one folder, lots of different spark hits. For example, you know, stuff like this, that's really useful for compositing into your footage. And we also have some cool, what we call ember bursts, which are some spark elements that have a little bit more character to them, in my opinion. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into our compositing. Let's go ahead and grab our spark floor 09 here our element and we'll just drag this onto our composite and take a look at it. The cool thing about this element is that it interacts with the ground here. So I'm going to place this one right up here and we'll have it spark off camera. And I'll just kind of generally align it here for now. We're going to have to track it into our scene roughly here. So we'll do some uh, point tracking. But let's just go ahead and get the general timing right first. So Chris jumps down here we'll have that spark happen as he's jumping down. So we'll just kind of position it here where we want it. All right, that looks good. So now let's go ahead and position our second spark element as well, and we'll track these in in a second. Uh, but I just wanna get the timing right first. Sometimes it's helpful to just have a vision in your mind of what you want, and timing is really crucial for that vision. If you ask any editor about that, you know that a video editor can totally enhance or destroy an actor's performance. All right, so we'll use this second spark element here, drag that into our composite, and we'll do this one on the uh, top right of our frame here. And those sparks will fall on the floor behind our character. That's cool. Okay, and now that we've done this, I'm actually going to track this shot inside of Mocha. We could just do a point track on some point of contrast here in the background, but I think a planner track is gonna work better. Probably we could track this post here since it's uh, staying throughout our footage. So I'm gonna select our live action shot here. We'll go to Effect, Boris Effect Mocha, Mocha AE, and you can see I've already used it on there, but I'll delete that one. So we'll select Mocha, and now Mocha will start separately, and we can just go to our spline creation tool here, and I'll just draw I'm gonna just draw a little planner track around our ropes here in addition to our post. And obviously you can, if you can find a better track point, a better point of contrast, I definitely go for it. But I think this is gonna be just fine. Just track that post, let's give it a shot here. Track this forwards. A lot of the time planner tracking is a lifesaver when it comes to some tricky shots. All right, so our track is sticking pretty well here. I think since the sparks are moving, it's gonna be just fine. 
Now we'll go ahead and close our project here. We will save it. And now to export this tracking data, first we'll click on create track data. And then we're going to select the transform option. We want to create a new null object to add this tracking data to. So we'll go to layer new null object and then go back to the shot and we'll export our tracking data to this null object that we have just created. So in this case, null 17. For you, it'll be just null one, I believe, if it's the first null object in your scene. And we'll relabel this null object to, we'll just call it planner track. And we're gonna try to use this track for both spark hits, but if you wanna be more precise with it, you could use two separate tracks since the spark hits are in two different areas. So for this spark hit over here, you'd maybe just track a portion of the floor or this back wall so that it sticks to the footage a bit better, but this should be fine. Now we'll go to our live action shot. Again, we've selected our planner track to export our tracking data to, and we'll apply that export. And now you can see here, if we scrub through our scene, that null object is sticking pretty well to our footage. And now all you have to do is go to our two spark elements. We'll parent these guys to the planner track or to the null object, I should say. And now they are tracked into our scene. Now, obviously we don't want that one to be rotated. So we'll reposition it to line up with our floor here. So this is looking pretty good. Obviously our spark hit should be behind this pillar where that's in the foreground of our shot. Um, so we'll deal with that here in a second. Let's uh, make sure our second spark hit looks nice as well. It should be behind our character here. So we could either roto him out or we could just position this so it's just kind of behind him. That looks pretty good. You can see it's slipping a little bit at the end there, but you know what we can do is we can go to that transform option and we can have these sparks fade out as they uh, are on the ground. So around here, we'll add a keyframe to the opacity and then a second later, we'll bring that to zero and then they'll kind of fade out there before they slip off of our footage. One thing we need to do for both of our spark elements is we want to enable our motion blur on each. So we'll just go ahead and add that motion blur in. And what that's going to do, if you look at this element here, you can see what happens when we add that motion blur. Since that spark element is being tracked to our footage and is moving around our footage based on that null object's movement, by selecting this motion blur option, it's going to automatically add motion blur to the element and help integrate it into the footage a bit better. And obviously we can add more motion blur here in a second, but just enabling these two options gets them a little bit more integrated. So already we're looking pretty good here. Now, obviously this foreground pillar here that's out of focus should be in front of our spark element. So to deal with that, let's just duplicate our live action shot. And then I'll put this above our spark layers. And then I'm just going to rename this uh, pillar Roto, and we're just going to go to our mask tool and we're going to make a rough mask around our pillar. And since it's out of focus, we can just feather our mask a bit as well. So maybe uh, 70 pixels. Let's take a look at it by itself here. Yeah, something like maybe 140 is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty blurred. So we can do that and then we can try to track it, but I might just try to animate our mask manually. I think the track might be a little tricky since it's out of focus, since it's out of focus. So I'll just add keyframes on our mask and then I'll go a little backward and then I'll just make sure our mask lines up to that foreground element and I'll just keep going through our scene here and just give this foreground element a little roto work. All right, and I think at this point, I think that this pillar stays pretty much out of our shot, but let's double check. Okay. And the cool thing is, is that since the spark elements are moving and this is a blurred foreground, you can actually get away with a lot. So I think that's gonna solve our issue there. The pillar comes back at the end of the shot, but our sparks are gone by that point. So now that we've rotoed out our pillar and placed it in front of our spark elements, we get something like this. 
and already this is looking pretty good. Now let's do a little bit more compositing work on our sparks. They're looking pretty good here, but we wanna check the color correction of the sparks, the blur of the sparks, and then we also wanna add some glow to them as well. So we wanna to try to match all those things to integrate it into the shot a bit better. And then um, obviously we could do some cleanup work by rotoscoping out these ropes here. But to be honest with you, I think that's past the scope of this video. Essentially the same technique that we used for this foreground pillar here, you can then mask out this pillar and these ropes here as well. But let's just add some blur to this element so that when the motion blur is not affecting the sparks, at least we have a little blur on it. So I'm just gonna select our spark element here. We'll focus on this left one for now. I'll select it, go to effect, blur and sharpen. And we wanna add a camera lens blur to this element. And already that's helping me believe that the spark element is there a bit more. You can see before it's a little sharp, after we just add a blur of five, looking much better. Now camera lens blur is much slower than for example, a fast blur because it's trying to emulate how like a out of focus image looks when it's shot through a lens. So it's calculating some more things here. So it's a little bit more intensive on your machine. So keep that in mind. But for this example, since we're trying to make it match the blur of our camera, it's gonna be helpful to use it. And I'll just go ahead and press Command C, copy this lens blur and paste it onto our other spark element as well, which you can see that's helping already as well. You see before it's uh, kind of sharp and then after it looks uh, looks more integrated. And we actually might increase this to maybe uh, seven to get a little more blurry in the background. And now we'll give it a watch here. You know, I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little too much blur on our right spark element, but overall, I think we're we're getting there. Now for these specific spark elements, their color already kind of matches the scene that we're in. So I'm just gonna add one more spark element to this shot so we can actually color correct it and match it and show you guys that process. So I'll use this Ember Burst Ground Side 2. We'll add that into our scene. This one's just like a burst to the side, but you can see it's much more orange than the actual shot. So let's flip this around. We'll position it kind of by the base of this structure here, and we'll kind of time it like we've timed the other elements. That looks pretty cool. And it's not tracked right now, so let's go ahead and try to use our planar track that we used for the other two elements. So we'll just parent it to that, see how that looks. Honestly, I think that looks pretty good since it's so fast moving, I think it'll be fine. Um, but again, feel free to track closer to the element as well if you want a little bit more precision. But now let's color correct this element so it's more integrated. Let's go ahead and uh, select our motion blur option here. Already you can see by adding motion blur, it's going to integrate your visual effect element into the scene much better, just a little before and after there. And we'll also paste in our camera lens blur to this element as well. But since it's closer to our subject, we'll decrease our camera lens blur a bit to maybe uh, we'll do like two. So it's just very minimal. But now you can see that the color of this element isn't really correct for our scene. And in this case, all we really need to do is just go to effect, color correction, add a little hue and saturation effect, and then bring down the saturation a bit. And now we still have some saturation in it, but it's not so red that it's unrealistic. And now our spark hits are looking pretty good. All right, so for the final touch for these spark hits, let's add a little bit of glow to enhance their impact a bit. Now there are several different ways you can add glow to spark hits. You can simply use a glow effect on the element and play with the threshold and radius. However, what I like to do is duplicate the element. So I'll press Command D duplicate this, I'll rename it, I'll call it Spark Floor 09 Glow. And then I'll just delete our camera lens blur on this element. I'll change the layer mode to add. And then I'll just go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur. And then I'll just slowly increase this effect until I get something that I like. And you can see that we're getting some hard edges here. To solve that, all we need to do is pre-compose our glow layer leave all attributes, and then enable our continually rasterize option. And now you can see those hard edges go away. And we've added some glow and environmental lighting driven by this spark element. So then we can do that same thing to our other two spark elements. So I'll do this for this one here. I'll duplicate it, rename this to glow, 
delete the camera lens blur, add a fast box blur. And this is for our right element here. We'll change the mode to add, and then we'll slowly increase the fast blur so you can see what our glow effect is doing here. Increase a little bit more. That looks nice. For this one, I don't think we need to pre-compose it because we don't see our edges. So that looks fine just like that. And then finally, we'll do the same glow effect for our ember burst ground spark hit here. So again, I'll select it, Control D to duplicate, rename this glow, change the layer mode to add, and we'll keep our hue and saturation effect on this one, but we'll delete our camera lens blur, add our fast box blur, and then again, I'll slowly just increase this. Essentially, we're utilizing the spark data to add some environmental lighting over top of our live action footage to help integrate them into our scene a bit better. Anyways guys, adding spark bullet hits to your scenes is a pretty basic effect. If you have good visual effects elements and do some basic color correction and compositing with some blur and glow, you should be able to get a pretty awesome result fairly quickly. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on this channel, and I'll see you next time.